at the Governor's Marketplace Conference in Salem, and we are here for our minority-owned, women-owned, and emerging small businesses to network with larger firms, state agencies, and um, just other agencies around the community. You're going to find connections as a small business owner and uh, be able to network with a lot of the exhibitors and our sponsors as well. We're really excited because we have 22 sponsors this year, of which University of Oregon is our title sponsor. So we're really excited about that. Oh, this is by far one of the best events uh, that can happen in the state, particularly if you as a small business owner want to sell to government. This is an event which is a perfect event for building those relationships, relationships, relationships. Well, thank you very much, uh, Cheryl. Uh, I'd just like us to recognize her one more time. She's done an incredible job, and we're really going to miss her. It's really good to be here and uh, to see so many people here. Uh, this has grown. I think we probably have over 400 people here now, and uh, it started out quite a bit smaller. We started this back during my first stint as governor, and uh, uh, without uh, Shara, without Eloisa, on all of you, we wouldn't have pumped it up to the uh, robust uh, meeting that it is, uh, is today. Uh, I am not going to take much time away from your keynote speaker. I just want to take a few minutes and talk to you by, about why this conference and all that it represents is so important to the state. Um, you know, as Cheryl said, uh, I really believe that the, the, the single purpose of at least my administration is, is about equity and opportunity. It is about ensuring that everybody in this state, <clears throat> regardless of geography, regardless of uh, income, home language, race, has an equal opportunity uh, to prosper, to meet their full potential, to have hard work rewarded by a better life, and to leave their children better off than they were economically uh, and environmentally. And towards that end, we've taken a somewhat different approach to economic development in Oregon over the last three years. Uh, and a lot of that work has to do with how we work together. Uh, we've created our regional solutions network. Uh, we're fostering innovative and collaborative approaches to both economic and community development throughout the state. And we're actually seeing some results. Not that there isn't a long way to go, but we're seeing some very positive results. Uh, our economy, I think, is uh, in much better shape than it was uh, three years ago. Uh, last month, we created uh, 7,500 jobs in Oregon, which is the fastest monthly job growth in eight years. Uh, a lot of our <clears throat> some of our major businesses, uh, construction, leisure and hospitality, uh, health care, each added over a thousand jobs in March. Uh, since uh, 2011, since I took office in 2011, we have uh, added over 94,000 jobs uh, to the state of Oregon. And so that's very, very good for our state. It's very, very good for our future. At the same time, I think we need to recognize that the recovery has been spotty. Uh, particularly in many rural parts of our state, particularly within communities of color, English language learners have not kept pace with the overall state economic growth. Uh, and so I think it's very, very important to recognize that uh, while the macro numbers look good, there are places in Oregon that have not uh, moved as fast as we would like. And also of those 94,000 jobs, the vast majority of them have been at the top and at the lower end of the economic ladder leaving out a lot of those middle-income jobs or pathways to middle-income jobs that are so important to prosperity and to long-term economic uh, stability. So there's much more that we still have to do to ensure that this, this economic recovery reaches every part of the state, that we're creating those family wage jobs or pathways to those jobs in every corner of the state of Oregon. And there's much more to do to ensure that all Oregonians have an equal opportunity for economic uh, prosperity. So that's uh, uh, one reason why it, this, t this event today, I think, is so incredibly important. Uh, we can't move Oregon forward if we're operating in silos. We can only move Oregon forward if we can make connections and leverage opportunities. And I think by helping create those connections between uh, certified firms uh, and between procurement professionals and by creating opportunities both for existing business owners and new entrepreneurs, we're creating a much stronger economy for the state of Oregon. And that really is at the heart of what this marketplace is trying to do. And by supporting in a meaningful way uh, those Oregonians who are determined to build a more prosperous future for themselves, uh, for their children, for their families, for their communities, we're creating a skilled workforce that's ready and able to seize the jobs and, and meet the challenges of this new century. And Oregon's workforce has actually got to be reflective and representative of the, of the entire state because a strong and equitable economy means that businesses, uh, large businesses and small businesses have ample and fair opportunities uh, to succeed. 
We all know that small businesses and independent businesses are really the key, the backbone of Oregon's economy. You, you create jobs, uh, you're at the heart of driving innovation, and you deliver for communities uh, in every part of the state of Oregon. Today, I think, and this conference really is about building on that opportunity, right? I started this uh, quite a while ago. I never envisioned that it would have grown to this size, and we owe Cheryl and her team a lot for that. Uh, but I continue to be very, very deeply committed uh, to uh, a robust economic and business equity effort uh, for a number of reasons, but chief among them is that they make our competitive advantage in the state a lot stronger than it would be otherwise. So I want to give my thanks to the planning committee uh, of this conference. Uh, I want to again thank uh, Cheryl Myers. I wish her luck in her new capacity, but I'm sure she won't be a stranger here and can also help you uh, through her new uh, position. I want to thank all the leaders uh, who have come here together and shown commitment and intention uh, in leading into the important work that we're about here today. I also want to thank our state agencies that I think in a very meaningful way have stepped up on the provisions of Executive Order 1203. Uh, I'm very pleased to re report, as Cheryl said, that minority uh, contracting and women contracting, minority contracting has more than doubled in calendar year 2013. And part of that is due to this, this conference and the partnership between those agencies and all of you who have come here. Um, I deeply appreciate you and all that your businesses do for the state of Oregon. I'm very encouraged uh, and grateful for your presence here today, uh, and uh, I'm very proud that this marketplace has grown to the size uh, that, it, that it has. I think it, this work is key to support entrepreneurs and tomorrow's successful businesses grow and thrive, but I'm also very excited about the opportunities uh, of tomorrow as well, and I, and I know you shame, shame, share that view. Growing local dynamic companies that aren't going to leave the community, which is particularly important in many rural parts of our state, harnessing innovation and helping ensure that we have an inclusive environment uh, for our business, business community, our small business community to grow in and thrive. So your participation today, let me say finally, is I think a very shining example of the fact that Oregonians are willing to step up, they're willing to work hard, they're enthusiastic about the future of this state, and together we're going to make our economy and our, and our communities much stronger than they were. So thank you for being here. I deeply appreciate it and look forward to working with you in the years ahead. Thank you so much.